Okay, this is the first section of chapter four uh, from the applied year two books. That's mechanics. And uh, chapter four is all about moments. Uh, so brief introduction to moments before we get into some um, problems. So the first thing, uh, a moment, a moment is a turning force. Uh, sometimes it's referred to another name for it is torque. So you might have heard something about the torque of a car um, in terms of like the power maybe of the car. Um, and uh, it's measured in Newton meters. NM. Okay, which... Um, when you look at how we work it out, it sort of makes sense because uh, a newton is a, is a force, measure of force. Meter is a, a distance. And actually the way that we work out um, a, a moment is force times by distance. Now it's just not any old distance. This distance here must be the perpendicular distance to the force. So for example, if I had, um, um, and with, with these moments, you have like a pivot point. So I'm going to call this is my, my pivot point here, like this. So imagine like you've got a piece of wood and it's nailed at this pivot point so it, it can rotate around so you know it's free to rotate either this way or this way clockwise or anti-clockwise and let's say you apply some sort of force to the end of the pivot so let's say you apply a force here a force of n newtons and that force is at a a distance a perpendicular distance so you can see we've got it's perpendicular here um, of D from that pivot point, then the moment of that force would be the force times the distance. So I should put um, really rather than the force of N because it's, it's measured in, in Newtons, let's put a force of F. So force times distance is moment. Now that one was easier because you could see that the force and this distance, we had this perpendicular distance, but what if it's not perpendicular? Okay, like this second diagram over here, um, over this side, what do we do in this case? Now it says d sine theta, we're just going to explore why that's d sine theta. So let's say I have some sort of uh, pivot point here and I have a force um, that's going like this, yeah, a force that's being applied in that direction. And let's say that um, actually the distance that I know is not the perpendicular distance, but let's say that uh, I know this distance here, yeah? And let's say that is the distance D that I know. Well, the actual distance that I want to work at the moment, I need to be able to work out this distance here okay now when we have a question like this i would normally know maybe this uh, distance as an angle and i'd know that this this angle here and the question is how do i work out that side well you remember from mechanics if you want to work out this opposite side to the angle here it's going to be d sine theta so if i want to work out the moment the moment is going to be the force f times the distance which is d sine theta yeah that's why it says up here d sine theta and i'm going to draw a little triangle this little triangle is really useful to remember like this that if I know an angle here and I know the size of this 
um, normally it might be a, a force or something, let's call it D um, in the working that we're doing today, then the length of this side at the bottom, the adjacent to the angle, is going to be um, D cos theta. That's the length of that side, distance. And if I want the distance of this side, it's going to be D sine theta. That'll be the length of this side here. Okay, so this little diagram, let's highlight it. What color should we go for? Orange. This is going to be really useful when we have uh, a distance that's not a perpendicular distance and we want to work out what the perpendicular distance is. And not only is it useful in moments, it's useful when we're dealing with forces and uh, we're looking at forces on planes or like on a slope. And we need to work out forces in a in a parallel or perpendicular direction. So keep that in mind. That's really useful. Has all sorts of applications in applied maths, in pure maths. Um, so yeah, really useful to remember that. Okay. So here, find the moment of um, each force about P. So P is like this pivot point. Okay. What I call a pivot point. And I always say to students, if you are finding it difficult to actually visualize or understand moments, what I normally get them to do is I say, get your ruler. We've got a ruler like this. And a ruler normally has like a hole in the end here. And then what I say is, put your pen or pencil in this point here. So a pen or pencil goes there. And then apply a force either there or there. And what happens? is when you apply that force, the uh, ruler will start to rotate either that way, if you apply this force, or it will rotate this way when you apply this force. Okay, and you can think of moments a bit like that. So if I look at the first question, um, I've got this pivot point here. Imagine this is like your ruler, and this arrow here represents you sort of pushing on the end of the ruler. So the ruler, your pen is here at the end, hold, stopping that ruler from rotating at that point. But it can rotate freely around P. So it's going to rotate around in a, a circle like that, depending on the direction in which you apply the force. So um, we won't need this just yet. But what I can see is, is that actually the ruler is going to want to rotate in that direction given the direction the force is pointing in and if i want to work out the moment all i need to do is the force which is six times the perpendicular distance which is three and i can do that because look it's perpendicular see the right angle there the force think of it like the force and the ruler are perpendicular that's what i want and so that will give me 18 newton meters as that moment so that's a okay if you look at b in b the distance that i've got here eight is not perpendicular it's actually at 35 degrees the distance that i want is this one here yeah and then basically i will have my uh, right angle here or it's drawn on the other side and that will help me to answer the question so basically I'm turning the question so it looks something like this so you've got 12 newtons of force that way like pushing on there's my ruler there's my pivot point here so the question is what's the length of that side uh, this side is opposite the angle here so it's going to be sine it's going to be d sine 35 so it's going to be 8 sine 35 so for part b the force is 12 the distance is 8 sine 35 so i will work that out so 12 times 8 sine 35 
gives me, oh, I'm in radians, hold on a sec, let's change to degrees. Wondered why I got a negative answer, that would be right, 12 times 8 sine 35, there we go, 55.063337 89 so three significant figures 55.1 so 55.1 newtons let's run out a bit better 55.1 newtons okay so here we have our answer for a and our answer for b okay let's have a look at this um the diagram shows two forces acting on a, a lamina. Well, you could think of like a, a piece of perspex, a flat area. Um, find the moment of each of the forces about P. So I've got two forces um, or two moments. Now, when we talk about moments, we always talk about moments being clockwise or anti-clockwise that's because sometimes moments will act in one direction sometimes they act in a different direction they might cancel each other out or they may sort of sum together depending on di directions so this is about thinking about okay piece the pivot point imagine that this is a ruler here this is a ruler here OK, those rulers can rotate around that pivot, pivot point or a piece of wood or whatever can rotate around that pivot point. Which direction is the, for, is the force forcing it to pivot in? Is it um, or rotating? Is it trying to make it rotate in a clockwise direction? That means like this. Or an anti-clockwise direction like this. OK, now when I do these questions, I always draw what I call a moments diagram. So I'm only going to draw on this diagram the bits of information that are really important. So that may mean I may, may chop bits of lines off. So this is what I'm actually interested in. Yeah? Right angle there, right angle there. Right. Uh, this force over here is forcing this ruler to rotate around that way in a clockwise direction so I'm just going to put a little arrow on there to show right it's trying to make it rotate around that way in a clockwise direction whereas over here on this one this force is trying to make this ruler or line or whatever rotate in an anti-clockwise direction so I'm going to put an arrow there to show that it's anti-clockwise, so they're acting in opposite directions. So later on, we'll see about how we put those together. They may act together, they may oppose each other, they may cancel out. The only thing I'm missing at the moment is this uh, distance here, uh, which on the original diagram at the top is this distance here. Let's rub out the ru word ruler take that out so I'm trying to find what that distance is that is opposite the angle 50 so it's going to be sine it's going to be 2 sine 50 that measurement so 2 sine 50 and that, that's meters the distance right so um, let's have a look we've got 5 times 2 okay which is 10 newton meters okay that's acting in a clockwise direction so i'll just put uh, clockwise here and then the other force is or the other moment is eight times two sine 50 two sine 50 let's work that out 8 times 2 sine 50 and that's going to be 12.5 so let's call that 12.3 so 12.3 newton meters 
uh, and as we saw that's acting in an anti-clockwise direction that's going to be useful later on to look at uh, moments which are clockwise and anti-clockwise so for now we just need to maybe state the direction they're going in so 10 newton meters for that one 12.3 newton meters for that one okay you should now be able to do exercise 4a on page 72 of the uh, stats and mechanics year two book